Welcome back to Good Morning Texas. Today in studio we have Teresa Spaulding, Medical Director of the University Health Services right here at the University of Texas at Austin. Teresa, thank you so much for coming in My today. My pleasure. So can you talk to us a little bit about your duties as Medical Director at UHS? Well, I'm a family physician by training and I see patients as well as help organize the clinics in terms of being able to make sure that we are covering enough care for the patients as well as um, making sure everything works right for the physicians and the uh, others working in the clinic. Wonderful. So I'm sure as you know the flu is going, going around right now. What are some common flu symptoms that students can look out for so they know that they're coming down with it? It comes on very rapidly. Um, the fever comes on as well as sneezing, coughing, uh, runny nose. Um, some get a sore throat, but it's more the cough and the, and the runny nose that people really notice in the fever. Wonderful. So I know for myself personally, if I were to come down with the flu, I don't know how I would handle it because of my busy schedule. What do you recommend for the students who have that hugely, humongously big schedule yes. and they get the flu? That's the most difficult part. Um, it's best if you stay home and sleep and drink plenty of fluids because that's how your body um, fights the infection. It's a virus, there is medication that can help it, but basically it's really letting your body have the time to take it, to take care of itself. If you keep going and keep going out in public, you're infecting others, but also you run a great chance of picking up other infections, which would make you sicker and it for all to last longer. So speaking of um, getting sick, before we get sick, what are some foods and things that you recommend for staying healthy and making sure we don't end up with the flu and having to like cancel class and skip some of the activities that we really enjoy doing? We know that when your immune system is lo lowered, your resistance is less. And so by irregular sleeping, uh, not getting enough sleep, not eating appropriately. I think we're all guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> that that makes you much more a prime candidate for um, the infection to hit you um, as opposed to others who do follow that. So exercise, fluids um, are really the best thing you can do. Is vitamin C good? Vitamin C is good. You have to drink a ton of it for it to really, really have an effect. Um, but it's, it's definitely better than drinking a lot of sodas um, because it gives you more vitamins. Wonderful. So at University Health Services, I know that y'all are doing a lot of things to create awareness. I hear the flu shot vaccination fair was a hit. Yes, are was. there any other things that y'all are doing to create awareness for the flu? We have a lot of promotions both on our website. We um, publicize things to look out for and remind people about covering your cough. We put uh, cover your cough um, decals on all the mirrors in the bathroom because we're also reminding people about washing their hands because that's one of the greatest ways to help prevent from um, picking up the infection because if you touch a handrail or something and somebody has just coughed or sneezed into their hand and then put it on the handrail, um, you pick it up just like that. And the correct way to cough is in your the nook of your arm. Beautiful. And speaking of washing your hands, I just found out a couple days ago that I've been washing my hands wrong. Is there a certain technique for it and how long we should be lathering before we just, you know, get a paper towel and throw it away? You need to lather at least 15 to 30 seconds. So it's singing the ABC song or um, some people say a prayer, some people just do. <laughs> try to remember what they need for their um, grocery list is something, but you need to be to wash it um, repetitively. And that's why the um, alcohol-based uh, hand sanitizers work well. Some of it is because you have to keep rubbing your hands for it to, to dry off, and that's really the, the purpose of it, is the more you rub that off, um, the longer you are doing that. Or, Beautiful. So there's a lot of myths about the flu shot vaccination uh, from it'll make you sicker to you should not get it because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, what are those myths and are they correct? They're not. Um, it, studies do show that you do not get the flu from having gotten the vaccine. You might, if you've never been exposed to that particular virus, you might have a little bit of a reaction in terms of um, arm ache. Um, but the fact that some people develop a fever afterwards, they've been exposed to something. And so they think, oh, it's automatically, it's the flu. Well, it, it just can't be because it hasn't really gotten into the system. It takes 
about two weeks for it to really kick in to take effect in terms of helping to prevent the effect. Um, the infection from occurring for you. Well, I definitely should go yeah, out and get the should, flu vaccination get now. <laughs> Do you get the shot, Kim? I've never actually gotten it, so mm -hmm. I've been pretty healthy. I have, I've only gotten the flu once in my life, but I think for sure with this whole flu epidemic going on, I'm going to go visit the doctor and get yeah. my flu shot. <laughs> I've never gotten the flu, and I don't get the flu vaccination because of those myths that I heard, but I now know that I will go and get them. Well, you know, somebody can just cough in your face, and then, <laughs> you know, all the protection yeah. is gone, and you just really, that's one only thing that can help you. Definitely right. true. Thank you so much for being in studio with us today. My pleasure. We'll be right back after the break.